Good evening. Tonight's short scary story is about insanity and how people just won't believe you if you've been deemed to be insane. Perhaps that policy should be revised. Author name, Hyper Obscura. Story title, Fitzpatrick's Notes. I've worked in psychiatric wards my entire life. It's a calling. I suppose. A mission inspired by the tragedy of my sister's suicide. When I was just shy of seven, I was the one that found her in her room. Wrist cut open, a deep pond of blood amassing in her bed, the drip 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 of crimson droplets to the floor, still there clear as day when I closed my eyes. Her suicide note was a crudely drawn heart. That's it. That's all my parents got. I've since aided hundreds of patients, hundreds of lost souls locked away not only physically, but mentally as well. When they needed an escape, I was there for them. I talked to them, helped them through the darkness. Hundreds. But I can never forget Fitzpatrick's notes. Fitzpatrick was a young man, tall, dark, quite handsome suffering from a rather serious case of paranoid schizophrenia. He was convinced someone was trying to kill him, and I spent months talking to him, helping him write down his thoughts, trying to guide him out of the shadows when the grim claws of the disease got a hold of him. They had him on medication, of course, all sorts of stuff, but nothing seemed to help. Then the notes started appearing. At first, they were convinced he wrote them himself. They still are, I'm sure, but I'm not. I know he didn't write them himself, even though it very much resembled his handwriting. Simple, sinister messages they were. We're coming for you. We want you dead. We'll come when you're sleeping. We'll slit your throat. Every day, he'd find a new note and descend into what I can only describe as bottomless fear-induced hysteria. On the floor, under the bed, under the pillow, in his shoes, the notes would magically appear, seemingly out of nowhere. They usually had to restrain him, and I can still hear his desperate shrieks as they dragged him down the somber hallways, tears streaming down his pale, terror-stricken face. No one believed him, of course. How could they? A history of mental illness spanning a decade, in and out of institutions since he was a child. It was obviously just another stage of the sickness rearing its ugly head. Then, one day, a final note. We're here, Fitzpatrick. We're coming for you, tonight. They didn't know. Didn't know that he'd planned it for weeks. Didn't know he had a knife. How did he get the knife? It should have been impossible, but like magic, it was there. He stabbed the orderly 23 times. Poor old Gary Pruitt, pleasant, mild-mannered man. He was checking in on Fitzpatrick that night. Wasn't his fault, really. It could have been anyone. Fitzpatrick is long gone now but I'll always remember him and the notes. He was my first after all. You never forget your first. I'm just glad they never looked closer. I was sloppy back then. Still learning, I suppose. Learning how to copy another person's handwriting. Personal thoughts. Poor Fitzpatrick. Perhaps in a way knowing you're a bit crazy but also knowing that this particular thing, this threat, it's not of your doing. They're real notes, everyone can see them, and you're not writing them yourself. Either someone is torturing you, or someone really is after you. That kind of fear-induced paranoia, that would affect anyone, even if they weren't crazy. Imagine someone breaking into your own home and leaving these kinds of notes lying around. But it's only worse if no one believes you, or even if they think you're writing them yourself. What do you even do? When the orderly, Gary, checked on Fitzpatrick, 
He really had no idea what was going to happen. And I don't entirely blame Fitzpatrick. He just thought, wow, this is the guy who's going to kill me. Only it wasn't. I think maybe that's the worst fate of all. Not being believed by anyone. <laughs>